And here we are at SES San Francisco. Um, I'm joined by Jeremy Hull, who is the Associate Director of Paid Search at iProspect. Jeremy, welcome to San Francisco. You won one of our awards last night for the Hall of Fame 2013. Um, firstly, congratulations. How does it feel to be inducted into our Hall of Fame? It feels fantastic. So first off, thank you guys for the honor. Um, looking at the list of the other inductees, I'm just I'm just honored to be included with so many digital marketing leaders uh, in the space. We're honored to have you in yeah. there. Um, so tell me a little bit more about your background. Presum presumably you've been in the search world for many years. I have. Uh, I started, uh, it's been about eight years since I started. started in 2005. Uh, and I actually uh, kind of stumbled into digital marketing uh, by accident. I graduated from Texas Christian University in 2002 with a music education degree. And I proceeded to play music and teach music full time. I taught private lessons to upright based students in the Arlington School District. And it was a great, it was a great job. Uh, I was self-employed, I could set my own hours, and I got to work with young kids and inspire their passion for music. And it was very, very rewarding emotionally not as rewarding financially. Um, so <laughs> after a few years of doing that, I was looking at another upcoming summer and looking at a very light load of students, a light list of uh, students that I get to work with, so many of them going off to camp or going off to grandma's for a month. And I started to realize I needed uh, to look around uh, for an additional source of income or even a new job to get into. Uh, I knew several people who worked at Range Online Media, which is a digital marketing agency that was based in Fort Worth and was later acquired by iProspect. And because I knew several folks that worked there, uh, I chatted with them, I went out to lunch. I've always been good with computers, so I figured I, I could find something to do. So I started as a contractor, um, building keyword lists and writing those 190 character descriptions for Yahoo back in the day. And then I just kind of never left. I found out I really enjoyed the work. I really enjoyed working with our great list of clients. And I really enjoyed the fast pace and the exciting innovation in the digital marketing industry. And the music? And the music's still going on. So I play uh, four or five nights a week usually, playing uh, jazz. I play with a jazz quartet on Thursday nights. I love jazz. <laughs> I play with a 20-piece jazz big band on Sunday nights. And then on Fridays and Saturdays, um, I'm usually busy playing rock and roll or country music uh, or cowpunk music with my band, Holy Moly. Cowpunk, what is that? Uh, so it's it's kind of like country music. It's, uh, uh, it's all acoustic instruments, and it's inspired by a lot of old-fashioned country music, but played with uh, the energy of punk rock. Sounds very interesting. <laughs> so I'm sure most of our viewers um, know what I prospect is, but for those that don't, can you tell me a little bit more? Yeah. iProspect is a global digital performance marketing agency. So we focus on performance marketing across the digital space, uh, from paid search to SEO to feed-based programs to display, we do it all uh, for a fantastic list of clients. Uh, we have a such fantastic global brands that we get to work with. And we work with a number of uh, verticals. We do a lot with travel, we do a lot with retail, we work with pharma, we work with finance. Um, and really though, uh, retail is kind of our sweet spot. Uh, internet retailer uh, noted that iProspect has more retail clients on the internet retailer top 500 list than any other agency. Okay. We've got uh, six offices in the US and 60 offices globally. Wow, that's very big. <laughs> Um, and I know you, you've had a specific focus on enhanced campaigns over the past mm. year, and actually that is one of the reasons your insightful analysis is one of the reasons that we inducted you into our Hall of Fame. So can you tell me a little bit more about the work that you've been doing around that and maybe any trends that you've been seeing? In yeah. the so you can't understate the impact that enhanced campaigns have had on the search marketing industry. Um, with Google being the leader and with Google deciding to make such a fundamental change to their platform, marketers are still trying to figure out not only uh, what it means, but also how to adjust and it, it kind of iterate on their best practices in this new format that Google's created. Uh, you know, the, the great thing about enhanced campaigns is with any change, there's gonna be wailing and gnashing of teeth with folks that are upset either because some strategy they were using that worked now doesn't work as well, or quite frankly, because something that they were used to doing and comfortable with doing, now they can't do anymore and so they're out of their comfort zone. But the great thing about enhanced campaigns is that Google has is listening and iterating. Uh, and the great uh, thing about our relationship between iProspect and Google is that we get to be part of that conversation. We get to drive that innovation and those changes and really have a great collaborative relationship where we're telling them what our pain points are, what our clients' pain points are, and what the next steps should be. 
And really that's a testament to the relationship between Google and iProspect. Um, as, as far as trends and enhanced campaigns, uh, the first trend is a lack of sleep for all paid search marketers. Um, but you know, really it's, it's been an interesting ride so far. With the large window between when enhanced campaigns were announced and advertisers were able to upgrade, moving to the July 22nd deadline, iProspect has taken several looks and published a couple of POVs and white papers detailing what we're seeing in the space. And in the coming weeks, we're gonna publish our third POV, which is going to be very, very focused on the results. What happened to CPCs? Did smartphone CPCs rise as everyone predicted? And how does that look different for different verticals? So look for that in the coming weeks. Well, I, well, I know that ClickZ and SW would love to have a first take on that, so <laughs> please send it to us as soon as it comes out. Absolutely. Um, and obviously, you know, you keep mentioning Google. Um, you've got a great relationship with them. You've been doing lots of work with them um, over the past year. I know, we've spoken to Google, and we know that um, one of the things that they mostly appreciate about you know, the relationship with iProspect is your take on bid adjustments. It's, it's slightly different to how other companies um, may, you know, may, may use that. Can you talk to me a little bit more about the way that you use bid adjustments and how it does differ yeah. to other companies? So, so Paid search as an industry uh, is, is such a great marketing channel because it begins with a user telling you what they're looking for and raising their hand and saying they're interested in your marketing message right at that moment. And most advertisers do a good job of leveraging that input and that, you know, you're, you're, you're set up for success with very robust keyword lists and very granular structures. But at iProspect, we always want to find what the next step in marketing is and start to look at secondary signals that the user sends in addition to their keywords, whether that's their, their location their time of day, the device they're on, or any number of additional signals that give us further insight into what would be the most effective message, what would be the most effective way to respond to that user's declared need in their keyword. So iProspect has been using these secondary signals for geo-segmentation, for device segmentation, for time of day segmentation, for a number of years with outstanding success. And enhanced campaigns give us another way to approach this. So the way that we're looking at using these secondary signals is, in some instances, maintaining the granularity and the segmentation that's given us such success in the past, and then looking to see where we can leverage these bid modifiers to get even more granular and drive even better results for our clients. Perfect. And lastly, future, the next 12 months. I mean, are there any specific strategic <laughs> initiatives that you guys are focusing on or what can we expect to see? Well, it, it's almost cliche to say it at this point, but uh, mobile. And, and you know, that's been the word that's been trotted out for a long time. It's like, are you doing mobile? Do you get mobile? And the reality is it's not some separate channel or some separate business that you need to build a new team for. It's, it's a paradigm shift. And I talked earlier about how you know, Google is driving innovation in the marketing industry on their end by giving advertisers new tools. Well, one of the great things about this industry is it's a push and pull. Uh, our, our searchers, our customers are driving innovation simply in the way that they interact with our marketing opportunities, uh, the proliferation of devices, the uh, amount of users on phones, and what the users want when they're doing a search on the phone and seeing your ad. So as, as far as you know, what the future holds, I think it's gonna be mobile, but I think more than that, it's gonna be omni-channel. It's gonna be reaching the user wherever they are and making sure your brand is there to have the right conversation with them, whatever their use case. Perfect, fantastic. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Congratulations again. Thank and you. we look forward to seeing you next year, if not before. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you.